Hello and thank you so much for joining us once again on your favorite show. This is Today with Zantel and I am Kalumba Skonde. It's always a pleasure to be back. Now this series is dubbed The Road to Independence as we celebrate 50 years of Zambia's freedom. Our focus on this week's episode is the advent of colonialism in Zambia, then Northern Rhodesia. So after the break, we'll be hearing the story of colonialism in this country. Here's a message from Zantel. I feel so happy, man. Life is good. Top of the world's title. Let me tell you about this feeling, man. Ah. He feeling in Mbama. Boy, he feeling in Mbama. What? Nefion deo mfwate nkama. Sam teo bakamba te avan. Iwe fuchi na fuchi. Iwe fuchi na fuchi. Ama kozi ni chipa. But the quality fuchi. The quality fuchi. Kiri ya tishane. Olofea puroti. Rominga tishane. Zamtel, live life today. Hello, Kalumba, and hello, viewers. Welcome once again to another exciting edition of Today with Zamtel. This week, as our country continues to celebrate 50 years of independence, Zamtel takes us to a time when the British Colonial Office took full administrative control of our country. Now, even though the birth of colonialism is said to have begun in 1924 when Northern Rhodesia was declared a British protectorate, we can trace the beginnings back to the 19th century. Colonial rule was characterized by the domination of political, social, economic, and all other spheres of life by British nationals. Colonial rulers regarded Africans as being backwards and uncivilized. This also holds true as the reason why Africans were not given political or civil rights and were subjected to work for the Europeans as domestic and industrial workers. In the context of uh, history, we normally refer to the start of colonial rule at the time when the BSA company was given that charter to start administering this country, which was about 1889, 1890. As time was moving, the company itself could not continue to manage the administration of the country. So the British government itself had to come in now as the colonial power to take responsibility. So in 1924, therefore, a colonial, uh, the colonial rule was uh, the trans transferred from the company to the British government. And therefore, with that, all sorts of new administrative structures were put in place. Uh, you begin to see uh, the background of the things like the, the Legislative Council, the Legico, which is uh, the, um, the, the, the foundations of our parliament today being put in place. So that at the end of the day, you now have a structure that is now running the country. The meaning of colonial rule was that uh, the indigenous people of this country no longer saw themselves or were no longer perceived as people that were ruling themselves. The different kingdoms, the different chiefdoms in this country now were subordinate to another authority. And that authority was the colonial power, the colonial master. In this case, the British. The British had this in mind, that they were coming as protectors. In other words, they were saying there were a lot of dangers out there. So the people, the indigenous people could not protect themselves. So they created protectors. Now protectors were protectors which uh, were those areas where they were saying, they're not so much of a colony, they're just protectors, hoping that at some point they can become independent, begin to administer themselves. Colonial rule in Zambia thrived at the backbone of many factors. Among them, the desire by the weaker ethnic groups to seek protection from the Europeans, and in the process, the Europeans colonizing them. By the 1st of April 1924, administration of Northern Rhodesia was completely in the hands of the British colonial office. Before Livingston was made the capital of Northern Rhodesia in 1907, Kaloma was the first administrative center during the BSA company rule. At that time, Northern Rhodesia was separated into two, 
northeastern Rhodesia, which was governed at Fort Jemsen, now Chipata, and northwestern Rhodesia, with the capital at Kalomo. Kalomo, being the first administrative center, made it one of the earliest urban settlements in Zambia. It attracted Europeans and British colonial administrators. The administrator's house from that era still stands today. It was the official residence of Robert Corindon, who was the administrator during the BSA company rule. The administrator's house is referred to as the first state house as it was established at the center of British South Africa administration. Not much of the house has been altered. The exterior of it still remains in its original state. The administrator's house was built from mud and lime. It is over a hundred years old. Our account on the history of the birth of colonialism takes us to Livingston City on the border of Zimbabwe and Zambia. Livingston was established in 1905 when residents of the settlement called Old Drift then moved to the site. Even though the early settlers had established homes and businesses, it was not until the completion of the Livingston Bridge that truly opened the door to colonization in 1924. Where we are standing right now uh, is a place known as uh, the Old Drift Cemetery. As uh, you can see from the plaque, uh, it forms a final resting place for some of the early settlers that came through uh, with the coming of the BSA company into northern Rhodesia at that time. Um, most of these people came either as business pe persons or as individuals that wanted to seek a fortune out of the explorations and the movements that uh, the BSA company was making into the northern territories from the south. So this place is called Old Drift because um, this was the first place where, uh, where these early settlers came and um, they were drifting because there was no bridge, there were no motorized boats, so they were drifting on wooden rafts. So they chose a point called the crossing point, about uh, a kilometer from where we are standing. They could drift from the south with goods and other services onto the northern territory. As the old drift crossing became more used, a British colonial settlement sprang up and around 1897 it became the first municipality in the country and is referred to as Old Livingston. A number of Europeans lived at Old Drift and established farms cultivated by African laborers. However, in due course, many Indians came to work as traders and craftsmen and were later regarded as middlemen between the Europeans and the Africans. So where we are, we are actually looking at um, the resting place of some of these people that were living at Old Drift, and that settlement is just a kilometer upwards. I may also give you some hint on who these people were. We have uh, Alexander Findlay here. Um, he was a merchant. This person came to Old Drift in order to make money because there was a community here that needed the services. Today, uh, we still have the Findlays doing business in Zambia. So 50 years uh, of independence has meaning for us because we have the Findlays that are doing business in dollar and these are the owners of uh, Auto World. Proximity to mosquito breeding areas caused deaths from malaria. So after 1900, the Europeans moved to higher ground known as Constitution Hill. And as that area grew into a town, it was named Livingston in honor of the explorer David Livingston. What was at Old Drift is what you see in Livingston today. Let me give you some of the examples that shifted from Old Drift and are now found in Livingston. We have a chemist called um, L.F. Moore. That chemist started from here. And if you're going to turn today, you still see the same L.F. Moore chemist. So that is still in existence. Uh, you look at the hotel. I talked about a hotel to cater for the people that were working for the railways and those that were building the bridge. That hotel, called North uh, Western Hotel, was relocated into Livingstone. And that building still stands today. 
1935, Lusaka was chosen to replace Livingston as the capital city of northern Rhodesia due to its central location at the crossroads of the Great East Road and the Great North Road, as well as the railway system. It was in 1934 when State House, then referred to as the Governor's House, was built. It was first occupied in 1935 by the Governor of Northern Rhodesia. With protectorate status in 1924, the High Court of Northern Rhodesia was made subordinate to and in conformity with the laws of England and Wales. All United Kingdom statutes were given application to Northern Rhodesia. A legislative council headed by the governor was established. Five members were elected by the small European minority of about 4,000 people. No Africans were part of the election. Idio wa British South Africa wale teka kwa lea kapa atulula. Ifi bonfia wa sungu, fia liwelele. Eri fia le bonfia wa fita, fia liwelele. Uwa fita ali mu bonfi wa wa sungu. Eri onangu ifi ntu fi inefyo wale sanga, fi ntu wale sanga muno. Tafiale Colonial rule brought with it racial discrimination, Western technology, education, English law, taxation and urbanization. It also brought the establishing of towns and cities. Buildings like the Old Fisher's House and the E.W. Tarry's buildings are still standing. The old post office building, constructed in 1933, was the first post office in Lusaka and is located at the junction of Katondo and Freedom Way. When you talk about discrimination during the colonial era, the old Lusaka Boys School serves as a very good example. The school was for children of European farmers who lived in the area. The site was founded by the Dutch Reformed Church in 1908, but now serves as offices for the National Heritage Conservation Commission. Talking about the, the old Lusaka Boys School, this is a school which was established during the colonial, uh, colonial era um, around 1909 and uh, 1910. And uh, this school uh, was established sorry, to uh, cater for the um, a white farmer's uh, community. There was a lot of segregation that was taking place, not just here in Lusaka, but in a number of uh, places in Zambia. I'll give you an example of, uh, you go to um, the, what is the presently known as uh, the Njanji Commuter Train House, which, was, uh, which, which are offices for Sierra Holdings. That was a railway siding or a railway station in the, the early 1900s. And if you look at one of the portions on that building, it had a small window through which Africans were able to buy tickets, whereas the other side was for free access for the white community. The building behind me is the very first residential house for the colonial masters built in Lusaka City. Giovanni Marapodi, one of the colonial masters, built this house during the colonial era. The building is significant in that it represents the supremacy of the colonial masters. Unlike the residential areas for the natives, this house was located in the then prime area of Lusaka City, which was meant for the white settlers. Giovanni Marapodi was an Italian pioneer who used to run a brick-making business opposite what is now the Independence Stadium. That is where the compound gets its name. The Anima May Cemetery is the country's only cemetery where 
one of the governors of Northern Rhodesia's remains arrested. Sir John Alexander Mabin served as governor of Northern Rhodesia from 1938 to 1941. This site was a burial site for the English, Jews and members of the Dutch Reformed and Roman Catholic churches. It is also the only public cemetery in the country with a chapel of Gothic architecture erected in 1928 on a grave of a loved one, Audrey Mary Elizabeth Murray. This cemetery was named in honor of Ali Mamey, a South African doctor who came to Northern Rhodesia in 1908. It has graves dating as far back as 1922. The construction of the buildings on the graves is similar to the African practice of chiefs or religious leaders' graves. During the colonial rule, Africans experienced poor working conditions, miserable wages, a low standard of living, and introduction of tax and forced labor. This led to widespread discontent. This discontent was expressed through the Mwenza Welfare Association, headed by Donald Siwale. In 1930, many welfare associations sprang up through the country. The police forces during the birth of Colonial Ru were merged as the Northern Rhodesia Police. The Northern Rhodesia Police was effectively a paramilitary rather than civil organization, with its armed constables receiving martial training under military command. Because they were not trained in the civil manner considered normal in a more developed country, the purpose during the early 1910s was not to police Northern Rhodesia, but rather to prevent and combat potential uprisings. When colonial rule was born, our country began to prepare for some of the hardest times in its history, a time that would eventually define a country that we now know as Zambia. Well, Kalumba, it's back to you in the studios to let us in on what else Zamtel has in store for us. Well, that is amazing information on colonialism in this country, and such rich history should never be lost for the sake of posterity. I'm looking forward to next week's edition when we'll be looking at the Federation of Southern and Northern Rhodesia and Yasland, which is present-day Zimbabwe, Zambia, and Malawi. It's now time for the next segment, which is all about innovation and technology right here on Today with Zamtel. It's time for the Apps Incubator segment. Let's watch and learn. Good evening, viewers, and a very warm welcome to this week's App Incubator segment of the show. Now, this week I'm here with the Zamtelligent Team IT, and we'll be looking at the presentation later.